Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 1990 film The Suckling. And yeah, if you haven't seen it, that basically tells you what you're going to get. In a good way, in a sense, if you are into movies that are so bad they're good and fun and, and just you can laugh at, then The Suckling is for you. This is a movie I've kind of been hearing about rumblings in the kind of horror underground of people who are like, oh, have you seen The Suckling? You got to. It's so bad. But it's so wonderful how bad it is. Now, I got this Blu-ray through Vinegar Syndrome, so just know that it's available there if you have interest in the film. Um, also, obviously, spoilers because it's an older film. Uh, this was written and directed by Francis Terry. Uh, hasn't really done anything else. Like, this was one and done. This was it. The alternate title for this film, I kind of wish they would have uh, stuck with it, is called Sewage Baby, which... <laughs> Which, I don't know, I just chuckle to myself every single time I say it or hear it. Uh, Bloody, Bloody Disgusting had actually hailed this as one of the best worst horror films ever made. I can see why, although I would argue there are a bunch of worse horror films or bad horror films that are more fun. Because this one has fun, but it also gets really kind of boring and slow at times. But there is a lot of fun to be had here, I will say that. So the person, obviously, th with this film, it's very, very low budget. Uh, there was not a lot put into anything other than the actual creature in this film, which I would argue that there are different f stages of the creature's being, and I think that they probably should have kept it at the small stage, like have it mutate when it was the baby fetus, um, the aborted fetus, just have it mutate from that to like the little creature that it was. And keep it at that size because then they could have saved some money. Because I think once it got much bigger, it didn't look as good. It wasn't as scary or interesting. But you get kind of like the awkward movements of a person in a giant rubber suit. Which adds comedy in its own, in its, uh, in its own right. So, I mean, you wouldn't have that. But personally, I would have liked it to just stay small. Maybe go a little bit bigger on some of the death scenes as far as the practical effects go. Because the death scenes were not good. Like, they're just kind of, like, quick. They don't look good. It's just kind of like, we just need to kill someone real quick. There you go. Everyone's here for the creature. Like, just looking at the creature is pretty much the best thing. And then just laughing at, you know, how bad the acting is. Because it's some of the worst acting I have ever, ever seen in a movie. And it's so funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, Dean Mersill is the person who created the creature. Um, so good job on that, Dean. And Dean went on to actually do work with Critters 3, Critters 4, and the film Face Off. So actually had somewhat of a career coming out of the suckling, which is crazy to say, but totally cool. Um, so into my notes, I said, geez, geez, the opening scrolling story is just too much, especially with the very heavy handed music. Yes, there's some very heavy-handed mu music in this film um, throughout, which, you know, I feel like kind of adds to how bad and funny bad it is. Uh, the At least the stuff in the beginning kind of reminds me of being kind of like a Halloween theme song ripoff. It was very Carpenter-inspired. Um, I, I don't know if anyone else kind of saw that or heard that in that music. That I, I immediately, my brain went there when I started hearing it. I was like, oh, this is very Halloween theme-esque. Uh, with that first um, scene where the woman is having, the woman who ends up getting the abortion, where she's having a nightmare, and you have the doctor kind of showing up in the shadows, which I guess is her, is the foreshadowing of her going to get the abortion, basically, her fears of stuff like that happening. Uh, th when that guy's, it's just his silhouette, you just see that strong mullet. And it made me think, mullet slasher, that is what I want. Someone needs to make a very low budget, kind of like either horror comedy or so bad it's funny horror film that is a mullet killer who's the slasher. Like, that's a winning concept. That's 100% a winning concept. Go ahead, take that. Call it mullet slasher. I don't care. Just do it. That's the movie I want. The axe, the razor, and the scalpel very early in this film look unbelievably fake, especially when they're used. The axe doesn't end up getting used. It looks crazy fake, but, like, the scalpel and the razor, when they are actually used, you know, it's obvious that they're just kind of, like, lightly putting it across skin and then have it pumping, you know, the bits of blood out because it doesn't look like there are any cuts at all. It's just, oh, there's blood <laughs> left left behind. It's like, ugh. 
Uh, like I said, some of the worst acting I've ever seen, but I love that about the film. I love how bad the acting is in this film. I, I don't really think you can point to anyone in the film and be like, they're the best actor in this because it's all bad. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. But fortunate for people like us. They keep you... Oh, sorry. That's the Halloween note. Sorry about that. The first sex scene is insanely comical, and it gives you the idea that it's, it's almost supposed to be a funny film, but I don't really think a lot of it was necessarily supposed to be a funny film. But that first sex scene with the rich guy who has all the dildos, and he's got that beanie on with the twirly thing, and it ends up flying off, and the whip, when the when the uh, the woman like whips the dildo and pulls it over to us, to herself, and it's just like slowly going through the air... It's so funny, and it's so over the top, and it, it definitely plays like it was intentionally funny. So I think maybe there were some intentionally funny things thrown in there, but I do think overall it wasn't supposed to be as funny as it is, because a lot of it is that kind of unintentional humor. Um, the lady doing the abortion, Big Mama, uh, makes a comment about the fetus being much too large for that stage of pregnancy, which actually indicates to me that it was kind of a demonic baby from the beginning. I saw that immediately, and obviously you end up seeing that at the end with the uh, the rape scene in the mental hospital where, you know, things come out, out of her, out of her vagina and start grabbing the guy and gives you the idea for a sequel, which, you know, if they decided to make Suckling 2 right now or Sewage Baby 2, I would watch it just out of curiosity. I wouldn't hold out hopes that it would be as bad, as funny bad, but, you know. It is what it is. But the, that comment that she made made me think that it was already demonic. Now, the events of the film would lead you to believe that just because the abortion happens, it becomes demonic, basically making the comment that, you know, it's a monstrous thing to have an abortion. Um, you know, I'm not going into, you know, a debate on that right now because there are a bunch of sides to that. But... I'm saying the the film is definitely trying to make that comment. So it says that about it, but when you look at the whole of the film and you know about the ending, it actually seems more like, based on that comment, that the baby was demonic all along. So, I don't know. Your thoughts in the comments. Reusing the coat hanger from the abortion was... It's one of those moments where you're just like you feel conflicted because you're like, that's gross, that's inappropriate, but it's kind of funny at the same time. You know what I mean? It's one of those where you're just like, oh, I don't know how to feel right now. I feel so many ways about this. So, yeah. Uh, such vague and disconnected dialogue. The writing on this is terrible. Uh, I mean, obviously. Because a lot of the times they'll be, you know, saying things that don't really connect to what's really going on or the dialogue will come out of nowhere or it just the way people are interacting with each other doesn't seem realistic and the, it, the dialogue doesn't match up of what people are saying to each other. It's like they're having kind of different conversations uh, and a lot of situations of things happening and people not really acting all that appropriate for the situation just because bad writing, you know, but it's a gift. It is a gift. And th there is something to point out that this was at the tail end of that time period where you know, direct-to-video horror films were still making money. So I think that was probably an impetus for getting this film made for these people doing it because they know that, you, you know, no matter what, there still is that market for people who, they don't need to see a great movie. They just want to see whatever's out there. If it's on video, they'll check it out. So important to remember. All they want to do these days is shoot their load on your face. I guess everyone's got their problems. That was an insanely funny uh, comment or a di piece of dialogue to me, especially because of how funny it was. Because it was like, all they want to do these days is shoot their load on your face. I guess everyone's got their problems. <laughs> and I was just like, I guess so. Everyone has their own load on the face problem these days, I, I suppose. The umbilical cord snapping the, la the one lady's head off. I think her name was Bertha, I believe. Uh, and pulling it into the toilet is a ridiculous thing. It's a ridiculous scene. But it's also a ridiculous concept that gets to something that um, was happening a lot in that time. Whenever there's, like, deaths involving toilets or things coming through toilets, going in or out of them in horror films then, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, physically, these things would not go through the pipes. 
let alone get into the twisty toilet in her workings. Um, so the fact that her head goes in and then it disappears is crazy. But I guess you could say that, like, oh, the creature was so strong that it was able to, like, crush her skull down and then pull it all through. Sure, whatever. But it just made me think about that. It's funny to me, to me how there are a bunch of movies out there with the... Oh, I already talked about that. Sorry. My, my apologies. It looks like they used whatever light, lighting just happened to be in the house. Which, by the way, looked like a house that was going to be uh, demoed anyway. Which made sense because it looked super run down. It didn't look like anyone actually lived there. You could see in a lot of the scenes that there are like holes in the ceiling and places. And then obviously they burst through the floor at one point with the creature. So they were destroying things and like knocking down walls and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, it looks like they use kind of like whatever lighting was there. They didn't use any like professional lighting for making a movie because there are a lot of harsh shadows and there's a lot of times where you're just like this is so poorly lit and even though this is a blu-ray it's so grainy the quality of it is terrible and i would just assume that you know it wasn't great quality to begin with and restoring it was probably tough anyway to get to the point that they even got to with that blu-ray so the way that dude axel kicks is unbelievably unbelievably ineffective the way he kicks just like repeatedly kicks and you could tell he was holding back like it was such light kicks it was ridiculous but hey adds to the charm um the fact that the creature is the strongest thing about it and then there's that scene where he's under the bed and then he grabs a woman from under the bed um, and it's showing its face, but you can't see it because it's so dark. Once again, just using whatever lighting was happened to be in that house. Um, they should have shown some light on that because that's your bread and butter. Like, that's your money shot is any time the creature's shown. And I'm, I know that they know that because of the amount of money they spent on it. The stop motion on the severed umbilical cord looks unbelievably rough. There's a stop motion on a severed hand later, which looks better. Actually... I was pretty impressed with that one based off of what I'd seen from the severed umbilical cord stop motion because that was horrid, like hard to watch how how poorly done it was. So the hand, when you then see it, you're just like, oh, that's a lot better actually. So I was kind of impressed at that point. Um, so they end up clogging pipes so the creature can't get to them, but then they're trying to like bust down the wall to get into the pipes to get to the creature. So there's a lot of logic issues in this film. <laughs> like I was talking about, like, you know, characters not doing things that really make sense in the situation. Um, what are they trying to do here? Like, are they trying to stay safe from the creature? Or are they trying to get to it? Because they're doing two different things at the same time that don't line up. So I was just like, what? How and when did Axel become a villain? That's another thing. Like, out of nowhere, he becomes, like, the super villain of the film. Like being terrible to everyone and shooting candy in the head like i don't it makes no sense like there's just like this switch and there's no reason for it once again going back to the bad acting why does the creature electrocute himself that one point where the creature is electrocuting himself and then axel comes at him with that steel pipe and then you know goes past him and he ends up getting electrocuted i'm assuming the creature was just electrocuting itself for that to occur but the creature doesn't have the ability to set that up. So it was just one of those things of, you know, poor script writing. They just did it just because they wanted to make that scene happen. They're just like, oh, no, it's electrocuting itself. Dude, run at it with a pipe, which, you know, the way he was running at it didn't make sense like this. Like, wouldn't you be whacking it? Once again, characters doing things that don't make sense. I like how Big Mama says she, that she'll end up solving everything numerous times to people, and then she just continues to do absolutely nothing for the whole film. Like, she literally does nothing. The The most she does at any point is tell someone to calm down, and that's it. But she keeps saying, like, Mom, Big Mama will take care of it. Big Mama's got this handled. And then she just sits there on the couch. At one point, she had nodded off. She was just sleeping. Which, by the way, she looks like Beetlejuice in this. Am I right? With the white black and white striped uh outfit she has on and her like blown up blonde hair she looks like beetlejuice man rewatch it think about that um what was all that cloth outside supposed to be that's another thing was this like a mock womb basically is that was what it was supposed to be when the rich guy 
uh, ends up going outside and it's just like all this like cloth stuff, like brown burlap sacks and like um, red, like, you know, thin cloth just like hanging all over the place. Like what's that supposed to be? I don't understand because I think it was supposed to be some sort of like material from the creature, which makes no sense because it's all cloth. It just, it's just another one of those moments where you're just like, well, that looks terrible. <laughs> just saying. I thought the creature was going to give the uh, her a hug at the end, the mom, uh, the creature's mom. I thought it was going to give her a hug at the end, so I was surprised when it actually like went back up inside her. But then I was just like, oh, that's kind of more crazy. So, you know, bravo, I guess. I didn't see that coming. Uh, and then I like... Like I was saying, I like how they set it up for a sequel at the end in the mental institution. Uh, wish we would have gotten that sequel, but it's not too late. We could. What is Francis Terry doing? I don't know. Uh, directing and camera work is the most basic of the basic in this. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not good at all either. I mean, I've made some independent films, like short films, a bunch of years ago, and I feel like the camera work and the directing is about the same. So, yeah. It's clear that the best aspect of the film is the creature. I just think it was better when it was small. It gets too awkward and too cartoony when it gets bigger. So I already kind of made this point, but to kind of expand on that, it gets too awkward. It gets too cartoon-like. It's just not as effective when it's bigger. But for people who like like the rubber monster movie effect of things, you get that. So there's there is something to like about you know when it gets bigger. The film is obviously anti-abortion, uh, as everyone who either was fine with abortion or par partaking in abortion ends up being killed. Uh, so yeah, very strong statement made there. The mother, who was the only one who wasn't all in on abortions, was the one who survived. So it's a very clear point there. Just saying. So anyway, uh, this is one of those films that I'm going to have to rate in two different ways. Uh, the first way is, you know, in the pantheon of films, out of all films... Half star, because I cannot give zero stars. Uh, half star for this. But if it's a so bad it's good film, I'm going to give it a solid three stars. I don't think you can go higher than that just because it does end up getting really slow at some point. A lot of stuff gets repeated. It's not that fun. Like a lot of the stuff in the basement just isn't that fun or interesting. It's just like a time waster. So I was between three and three and a half, but I think three is more appropriate. So anyway, uh, put your comments down here. Let's talk about The Suckling, a.k.a. Sewage Baby. And uh, love to hear what everyone has to say about it or read what everyone has to say about it. But do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button if you could for me. It, lean, it means a lot to me personally. It means a lot for my channel growth. And it takes you literally a second. So if you like anything I've done, that's your best way to repay me. I appreciate that. And if you are going to do that, make sure you hit the notification bell because then that way you know whenever I'm putting up new reviews or doing a live stream or whatever. I have some good stuff coming up for uh, September and October as far as live streams go. It's going to be fun. Uh, and yeah, regardless of any of this, thanks for checking this video out. And until next time, keep it brutal.